How do I climb in Reefscape? The end game challenge in this year's FRC game Reefscape is to earn barge points. To do that, you either have to park your robot in your alliance's barge zone or climb on the cage. Your alliance gets to decide what height the cages are hung at. You can either hang the cage about two and a half feet off the ground for six points, or you can hang it about three inches off the ground for 12 points. Parking is worth two points. If your alliance scores 14 or more barge points, you'll also earn the barge rank point. There are many different configurations of the three ways for each robot to earn points, along with the three robots to get past that 14 point threshold. The two minimum ways are a deep climbed robot and a parked robot, with the third robot not participating. The other minimum would be two shallow climbed robots and one robot parked. If your only goal this year is to park, there's a couple things to keep in mind. You'll want an easily controllable drivetrain so that you can get from wherever you are to the barge zone. You'll also want to make sure not to hit any of the cages, especially the deep ones that are quite easy to run into. And you'll also want to make sure you're not touching any of your partners who may be on cages as that will invalidate their climbs. The shallow climb resembles many past FRC climbing challenges where there's a climb point that's a couple feet off the ground and your robot has to extend up, reach it, and retract. There are a few ways to do this. You could have a dedicated mechanism such as a climber in a box that would reach up, go into the cage, and pull down on it, suspending your robot while the cage stays stationary. You could also, if you're planning on having an elevator on your robot for other parts of the game challenge, put some sort of hook on a part of the elevator that will be able to reach the cage when extended and elevate your robot when retracted. Make sure to gear your elevator such that it's able to lift your entire robot as well as just the carriage if you plan to do this. One thing to keep in mind, especially if you're trying to climb a shallow cage with an extended hook, is that if you miss the cage on the first shot, it will be swinging and rotating, which will make a second attempt much more difficult. There's also no spec for what angle the cage will be at when the match starts, so make sure to keep that in mind while building a mechanism to help you line up. The deep cage is a great example of a looks hard is easy challenge. At first, it seems quite difficult to suspend your robot on something that's only a few inches off the ground. But as we've seen from a lot of community prototypes and examples, there are quite a few different ways teams have come up with to climb on the deep cage. One of the first solutions you might come up with is to go around the cage and push down on the center, elevating the rest of your robot. This method in particular is quite reliant on making sure the center of gravity of your robot is in the center of your robot or centered on the cage. The reason for this is you can't climb much higher than the bottom of the cage. So if your robot tips at all, it's much closer to the ground. And if you tip into the ground, your climb won't count. Another type of climb we've seen is to drive up with two posts and then twist those posts such that the cage twists and your robot and the cage kind of compress. You'll want to make sure they have a lot of grip so that you don't slide around on the bar as you're doing it. A climb method I haven't seen too many examples of this year, but was prominently featured in 2010, is to grab onto the post and pivot your robot around that joint. There will be some CG issues, the cage may tip, so that might not be as viable this year as it was in 2010, but you may want to look into that method as well. The last method we have to talk about is a mechanism where you keep the bottom of the cage rather stationary and grab the top and pull it into your robot. As you pull the top down, since it can't lower, it forces the bottom up and the cage to become horizontal inside your robot, causing your robot to lift off the ground. This is the method developed by the EveryBot team. This spring-loaded mechanism will latch onto the cage and then be pulled back into your robot, causing that tipping force. It's important to keep in mind that when the cage is in its final resting position, you want the anchor point of the cage to be above the center of gravity of your robot. This is somewhat easier in this example, unlike the center climb example, 
because you can vary where that is as you winch in the hook. Every climb method has the same things to keep in mind, mainly that you want the anchor point of the cage and the chain to be above the center of gravity of your robot when the climb is complete. The center of gravity or center of mass of your robot is the point at which your robot will balance both left, right, and forward, backward. You'll want the anchor point of the cage or the chain to be directly or as close as possible above this point when your climb is complete. This year, we're expecting to see quite a few elevator robots, which will mean there is a mechanism made out of multiple pieces of box tube and an end effector, usually far off to one side of a robot. You'll want to keep that in mind when designing your climber, as you don't want to tip toward your elevator. You can do things like put a battery or another mechanism on the other side of your robot to balance the weight out so that when you bring the cage into your robot, everything's balanced. All the mechanisms we've talked about so far, such as a cam to push down in the center, a pivot point here, or a winch pulling a hook, all require a significant amount of torque to lift a full weight robot. They'll all need a high reduction gearbox with a powerful motor on it. The high reduction gearbox converts the high speed output of common FRC motors into a low speed, high torque movement that's good for pulling the weight of your robot off the ground. As with most previous climbing challenges, there are plenty of examples of these high torque mechanisms for you to look at. Since the deep cage is so close to the ground and barge points are scored three seconds after your robot is disabled at the end of the match, you may want to consider a ratchet to keep your motor from back driving once it's disabled. It's also important to put that motor in brake mode so that when it's disabled at the end of the match, it will naturally try to resist back drive. We've covered a few examples of how to climb the cage this year. There's even more out there in the community that I encourage you to go check out before you decide how your team wants to earn barge points this year. And that's how you climb the cage in Reefscape. <laughs>